We've given ourselves time and space. Time and space post the hot take on the Moala versus Farrell tackle. And that video, I hope you've seen it. I, If I can work that through, I'll put the, uh, the link in the uh, description. And you can look at that first because that, in terms of its chronology, uh, arrived before this video. This video is the more... The more chilled, the more reasoned, the more calm, the more circumspect, maybe. As we look at these tackles, and the big question as I reflected on the video and as I reflected on this context was, it really amounted to this, this question. And so you can think through yourself. When I ask it, is this about the George Moala tackle or is this about the George Moala tackle because of what has transpired in the Owen Farrell tackle? And if that's the case, if it is the latter, then there are separate questions going on here. And we need to ask them and deal with them individually and then hopefully come to um, some type of resolution on them individually and then in light of that greater context. So the first question is, did George Moala receive uh, a reasonable uh, suspension or reasonable uh, judgment or verdict based on what transpired in his tackle? It was interesting, after the video, I uh, reflected and looked and looked closer, looked closer on my phone, a small device, uh, and was able to try and pause it at the point of contact. And when you slow it down and when you take it, you know, as they do, you know, piecemeal and frame by frame, granular, uh, in a granular way, then you can see that uh, the, the first point of contact is, isn't is perfectly flat. Hot takes and don't necessarily have as much light as heat. But it isn't anything uh, acute. The angle's not acute. So if you, if you stop it, then the first point of contact is probably around his shoulder um, on the Canadian player. And I have no idea in terms of what happened to him if, if he was injured. So I, I must make that clear. And even though... We want to say that doesn't impact. Obviously, it does impact uh, on how we perceive a tackle. And so I also looked at the the sanctioning sort of uh, guidelines. And I think 10 weeks is mid-range. So World Rugby has decided George Moala's tackle is mid-range. So not severe for a tip tackle, but not um, at the lesser end, uh, which will, which I think is about six at six weeks. And there are other questions that we can ask, and maybe we'll ask and answer them in another video. But if you put it in the mid-range, then 10 weeks is, according to uh, their metric, is a reasonable uh, consequence for what transpired. Now, is it in the mid-range? Is the George Myler in the mid-range for tip tackles? Potentially. Probably, in fact. We can say that it probably is in the mid-range. However, there is a larger question that's going on here, which is, in one sense, is is subsequent or not directly related to what's transpired because those who have uh, judged and decided on this uh, don't have the freedom to make a larger outside uh, verdict and, and, in one sense, cast their own um, ethical framework on what's transpired. Because if I'm... If I am to, to give George Myler 10 weeks, then the 10 weeks is dependent on the larger context, which is the Rugby World Cup. Uh, 10 weeks when there is no uh, more internationals or where the internationals are a, lo excuse me, a long way away. Throat's giving out, a lot of talking. And, um, and that makes a difference. And, and I think it should make a difference. I don't think every test is equal. And I think if, we, if, if we're going to have a system based on weeks, then that needs to be factored into the equation. And also his record. If it's mid-range, then it should be cut down. So if they want to say it's mid-range, then I would say six weeks. If that's how they're judging it. But then because of the Rugby World Cup, I would, I would want to start, I would want to have, I'd want to have a different metric. And I will talk about that in another video. But I think we need to think really seriously about how 
uh, we hand out consequences in rugby union and whether or not a rugby world cup should be offered a, a special space, a sacred space, a sacred sporting space even. So looking at the George Moala tackle in isolation, which again, you have to, uh, then I think in terms of where it sits, it's probably the right spot. We can debate about whether, whether or not world rugby have <coughs> an effective system and whether or not that effective system um, has been or needs to be overhauled. So that's the George Moala situation. Now the Owen Farrell. I don't think I've moved from the Owen Farrell type context at all. Uh, I still uh, am befuddled. I said baffled last time, so another B word, befuddled. It is befuddling. If you're looking at it and you understand, you've watched rugby closely and you've seen over the years individuals who have been rubbed out who have been sent off for uh, uh, tackles that have shown a bit of movement and yet because of their body position then uh, they haven't shown any type of bending at the hips or any of these type of things that the referees have talked about and the explanation from uh, the those who have made the decision I don't see I don't see any uh, I don't see it's commensurate with with, the, with what I've viewed and that's problematic. That's problematic in terms of not just in this context, but in what's going to be transpiring in France in the coming weeks and what will, what will happen, how this will now be uh, used as um, a lens or as a context, um, as sitting law. I mean, we know what happens in a courtroom that um, if you can provide a, a precedent then not the president the precedent then you you have a basis for being able to say okay that's what law is if that's now the lens that we use to dis decide then everything else can has, must um live in light and fit in light and that's that's problematic that's problematic in and of itself that's problematic for world rugby and how they've been dealing with concussions and how they've been uh, officiating over a number of years and how the tolerance level has has lowered, and so you know even um, head contact on head contact is now viewed seriously. And um, so, in terms of the Owen Farrell context, uh, I don't see how he is not serving a number of weeks on the sideline. And I would say that if he receives probably less than six based on their system, then you could say, well, if he had a clean record, then you could mitigate against that. But he doesn't have a clean record. In fact, he has the opposite of that. And so you may bring that at a lower point, but then his record increases that. And then the larger context. And, and you can't dismiss that. You can't uh, ignore that. Uh, what uh, you know, perception becomes reality. And it is not a good look for world rugby. It is not a, a positive commentary on how um, how s there is such a discrepancy between one decision and, and, and the other decision. And that needs to be dealt with. And that needs to be confronted. And um, it needs to be uh, challenged even. I mean, we're talking about uh, the integrity of the game and moving forward, how can rugby continue and to be able to say, well, this is what this is where our consistency comes in. This is how we've viewed situations. This is how we've ruled and officiated. How can we, you know, in terms of being able to trust that that type of metric is, is both um, consistently applied and sufficiently applied. And so we can debate the George Moala and, and I think you know, this is where the nuances of these situations come in. It's very easy to provide that emotive, strong hot take and and to, and to feel the injustice of... There, there is a sense of injustice about what has transpired. But the sense of injustice is more so, I think, probably as we reflect on it, less about what they've decided on George Moala's tackle based on their own... Um, their own foundation or their own ethic, their own basis, their own metric. When you look at what uh, um, a medium tip tackle is, then it fits that. Now, yes, he should have received some mitigation because of his, his record. Uh, 
However, you know, that's, again, a, a, a much smaller debate. For me, the Rugby World Cup means that there is um, other factors that, are, that, that should be involved in how rugby in, uh, decides on consequences for foul play. And it's not that foul play should be, um, you know, should be swept under the proverbial carpet. But it, it is a discussion about how a World Cup, one event every four years, and how that is a different context than other test matches. And I think that you've got to start thinking about um, not weeks, but test matches or matches or certain matches or even, uh, you know, in terms of um, how, um, you know, the dollar bill is going to impact here. And whereas the Owen Farrell one is is the real... Uh, the real star of the show, for my, in my opinion, it's the one that that needs serious uh, consideration, serious discussion, uh, s- serious re- reflection, and, and and intervention, and so that's the one that that uh, is problematic, and defies uh, rugby logic and officiating logic and um, something that, that needs to be talked about and done so um, really it needs to be uh, uh, challenged so we'll see will it be challenged will something be done about it i guess it will depend on the the uproar and how that transpires but now that you've had watched two videos, which video, if the last one, if I encourage you the last one to send it viral for a certain reason, maybe this one for another reason, because I think in these type of situations, there is the normal response and maybe it's the injustice, especially it just seems wrong that, that someone's World Cup is now gone and yet uh, we see and we have that direct comparison. But if that video went viral for its strong um um defense not defense but 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 a strong sense of of this is not right of justice then maybe this one can be more so it's it's reflective reason and looking at the wider context and and and, and arguing and looking at these cases individually and then um, trying to come to a, a proper resolution and, and what that means for George Moala in terms of where it stands, in terms of where, because this, this is a separate question. It's not just where world rugby is now, but where world rugby should be in terms of how they deal with these types of foul play, and especially in light of a rugby world cup context. And that's, I think, a different discussion. And where uh, world rugby is in terms of the Owen Farrell situation and um, how it can be um, allowed to. Uh, continue uh, when the context of concussion and, and contact with the head and all that that has meant and all that has cost. I mean, I think back to the Sonny Bill Williams was a shoulder in the Lions series, which effectively decided that second test. And um, rugby is is a game that is not, it's not stationary. Uh, it's fluid and there's movement. So to... To allow a, a type of defence that because Jamie George has changed something, changed something in in the contact area for Owen Farrell. I mean that's like that's ABCs of rugby. Every tackle it could be have that defence. Every tackle you could argue that, and therefore every tackle should be let off that has head contact or the majority. And so, what is that? In other words, it's a, it's a meaningless. Defense, because the defense there is is relevant in every head contact. I mean, there is that dynamic reality. So, why are we even like saying you're a naughty boy or a naughty girl for head contact when there is movement and there's a dynamic? I mean, there's a step and there's changing of height, and players haven't got off, you know, scot free or Kiwi free or Tongan free or English free, or whatever free. Because a player is ducked, you still the responsibility is on the defender, and and and, and f- for a care of uh, the player who they're making contact with. And so, uh, as it rains, surprise, surprise. And uh, I mean, I think it's just the applause from above in terms of the argument is just airtight, watertight, watertight. 
So where do you stand? You can offer your response to this or the other one or interact with either. You can share this one. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, then please subscribe. This is a longer video. And I probably think it's time that I stopped. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what develops in this narrative, where it goes and where it heads. Because the likelihood is the Owen Farrell tackle without the George Moala tackle may mean that even though people were befuddled, they wouldn't necessarily be as incensed as what they will be or what they are already. Uh, and so that may mean that whereas Owen Farrell may have been able to, like, well, you know, he's just been blessed and things have worked out for him, then because of what's transpired to George, and George has got 10 weeks, you know, I think in a professional code, and uh, there are, there are more there, there can be more effective ways. And I think I've got an, an idea on rugby world cups and 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 i would like to um ring fence them if i can term it that way without saying too much but if you stay that's why you should subscribe because otherwise you may not see that video and i tell you what i could hardly wait to press record again until next time i'm johnny king